us for our panel discussion is the Deputy Head of Research at COL Financial, a position that he has earned through almost a decade of reviewing, analyzing, and developing his own company reports since joining the firm in 2010. After graduating cum laude from the Ateneo de Manila University in 2009 with a degree in management engineering, he proceeded to earn his status as a CFA charter holder and now currently serves as one of the lead coaches for the executive course of the Kalum Trading Institute. Let's give a round of applause for Mr. Mr. Charles William Ang. Ang. Okay, so also joining us on stage is the Head of Global Research and Strategy for City Securities, Inc. with a resume that boasts over 10 years of extensive market research and analysis. As a magna cum laude graduate from the Ateneo de Manila University in 2009 and a CFA charter holder, he has recorded four years of experience as an equity analyst for Valence Research and has been part of the global trading team at City Securities, Inc. since 2012. As a board of director for curriculum and content at the Calum Trading Institute, he also handles the fundamental analysis module for the recruitment program. Let's give a wa warm round of applause for Mr. Leonard Chua. And last, but definitely not the least, he is the president and CEO of the Kalum Trading Institute. He is a CFA charter holder, a graduate of Masters of Science in Global Finance from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology Business School. He has also been a student of multiple international markets for more than nine years, spanning countries from U the United States, Hong Kong and China, Japan, Indonesia, and of course, the Philippines. Prior to establishing Kalum, he worked as a research analyst for COL Financial. Let us give a warm Trader Summit welcome for the moderator of this panel discussion, Mr. Edmund Lee. Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, good, good morning. How are you today? Uh, just to be clear, we're not going through a crisis right now. So if you're expecting stocks to drop 50-60%, it's not going to happen yet. Okay? So, bakisip nyo, puro crisis lang sinasabi ni Chairman, makita na yung crisis. Today's topic is all about wisdom of the crowd and how to pick winning stocks. And I've been very fortunate for the last decade to be working with Charles and uh, Leonard. In fact, we all entered mostly at the same time, almost in 2010. And thankfully, we're all still here. So... What I'd like to share to you guys about today is that if you notice about Chairman's topic, he always shared about how there's always multiple reasons as to why stocks go up and stocks go down. And I think that's very important is because when you just simply look at a price, yes, you can tell whether something is stronger than another chart. You can tell that BDO is stronger than Metro Bank. And uh, <laughs> you can tell that a lot of stocks are stronger than the other. But it doesn't tell you what type of strategy that you can expect going forward. And I think that's the main important about this today. And thankfully, again, we have both Charles and Leonard here to share. So first of all, thanks guys for being here. Sure. Maybe Thank you. Thank you. you can share to the entire crowd here today. How do you marry both fundamental and technical analysis all together? All right. Okay. So um, we believe that uh, basically fundamentals and technicals are interrelated. They're linked. Um, by that, I mean that knowing the, or understanding the fundamentals of the company would, would tell you or help you with, when it comes to your expectations in technicals and vice versa. No, like looking at the chart, if you see a chart breaking, breaking down or breaking out, it also gives you a clue or a hint at least on what the fundamentals are like. So, in a way, this is intuitive, right? Because both factors are reflected in a single share price. Like, there's no, like, share price for fundamentals and share price for technicals, right? There's only one share price. So, they're, they're, they're intrinsically linked. And so, in Kalum, we, we, one of the most simplest um, tools that we teach is classifying stocks. 
and we classify them either as 45, 45 degree companies, 60 degree companies, or 90 degree companies. And, and, uh, and just to, to explain how we categorize things, it's primarily fundamentals. No? So the, the most important variable is that we um, look at the visibility of earnings, earnings visibility, how predictable are the earnings. If the earnings, on, so on the one extreme, if the earnings are very predictable, very visible, then you have your 45 degree companies. We also call them your stalwarts or your blue chips, right? So they're very predictable. Um, you, can, you can already expect, you don't, generally you don't get surprised when they report their earnings reports, right? And then on the other extreme, you have your 90 degree companies, wherein they don't, gener they don't currently make any money. And so you're just buying them based on plans, on, on um, rumors, on PowerPoint presentations. No? So, so very much, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty there. And obviously, the 60 degree company is somewhere in the middle. And so notice that while the classification is primarily fundamental, there's an implication when it comes to the technical expectations. No? So I, I don't want to be too technical about it, but basically we trade them differently. The way we trade 45 degree companies will be very different from the way we trade 90 degree companies. So I, I, I noticed a while ago, Sir Juanis was mentioning about BDO, for example. It went from zero to overbought, right? So Sir, Sir Juanis said, but if you think about it, it's only a 5% move. From 133, after two days, 140, and now it's overbought. Right? So that's only a 5% move. So it's very different if we're trying to trade 45 degree companies like BDO versus your 90 degree companies or your informed spec, wherein if you see them like, like a 5% move, is that's just the start of a move, right? So it's very, very different. So you have to know there will be different rules for each of these categories. No? So, so obviously, so I know this is a very, very simple explanation of or, or application of fundamental analysis, but nevertheless, I hope it shows you that there is a link, and knowing one would help you with the other. So, yeah. Leonard, do you have anything to add? Uh, I'll add to that. So basically, what we're trying to say is there are many games in the market, and you need to know what type of game you're playing. So if you remember, like the Lepanto that uh, Chairman shared, did it went down eventually? Yes, right? Yeah. So these are your 90 degree companies because you don't know what will happen five years down the road. But your URC, where it's more earnings driven, it just kept going stronger. So what we're saying is ideally when you're given a tip or you want to buy a stock, you have to know, are you buying the business today or are you buying a promise tomorrow? And that affects the strategy that you will have to make. You've been largely in charge of global head of research. How different is it from a global perspective versus just looking at it from the Philippines? Uh, okay, in, so I look primarily more in the US and historically they're the same. The way you look at companies here and in the US are similar, except the stocks and the asset classes are different. For example, the 90 degree companies there could be your Bitcoin or your uh, genetic testing, genet gene therapy uh, stocks, while the 45 degrees are your Amazons, your Facebooks. So those two are traded differently, treated differently for us. So here it's your third telcos area as your speculation versus outside is totally much more enlightening endeavor. Um, going back to what you mentioned a while ago, you talked about you'll have a different trading strategy for both 45 and 90 degree companies. How different would that be? Okay, so generally for like 90 degree companies or informed spec, we trade them on strength, meaning uh, momentum setups would be your primary tools. Um, versus, for example, for 45 degree companies, the thing with 45 degree companies is, again, they're very predictable. Everybody knows what the value of BDO is or what the value of SM is. So once they move like a 10% move in a few days or a 5% move in a few days, more or less they're, they're expensive again, right? So you have to wait for earnings to catch up. So the, 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 the way this translates to technicals is that we usually prefer them 
on longer consolidations. Right? So it's not, we don't really buy them on momentum, but we buy them during, during corrections, during consolidations, as long as the trend is intact. Of course, there's still some technicals to it, but we, we generally prefer like, uh, longer consolidations for 45 degree companies versus 90 degree companies. No, and, and by the way, you know, just to complete the picture, the reason why we call them 45, 60, and 90, that's, that roughly describes their level of ascent. No? So 45 degrees, so once it goes up 5, yan yun, kasi hanggang dyan lang talaga yan eh, di ba? You have to wait for earnings to go up again, right? Versus uh, 90 degree companies, they're just volatile. Eh, like one day up 10%, the next day down 20%, right? So any, anything goes. No? So you have to be more careful for 90 degree companies. You have to make sure you're on the left side, as, as Boss was talking about a while ago. One of the basic premises of technical analysis is that history repeats itself. And like what we've seen a while ago from Chairman is that he showed how multiple different charts, multiple different reasons, um, policy, credit, and fundamental driven or whatsoever. So when you're looking for stocks, what in particular criteria are you looking for? Do you want to take this? Um, Maybe so, you can start first, Leonard. Okay, so for in, in the US perspective, we really like earnings growth for the 45 and 60. So we like them to be in the young industries. So Chairman showed the life cycle a while ago. See, you remember that? With many companies in the Philippines, the mature growth and mature stable. But we prefer industries that are younger. So the potential is much bigger, like e online e-commerce, social media, etc. So potential of the industry is a big factor. I mean, it's totally different from the Philippines because the stories outside are very sexy, right? So in the local scenario, how would you, what would you be looking for? I guess for the local case, um, it's in a way it's easier because again, as you mentioned, the businesses are like more boring, like your typical business, right? So they're easier to understand. But um, I, I guess a, a key, because a key um, goal of fundamental analysis is really looking for mispricings. No? So mispricings, that's basically your difference with the current price, the market price, and what you think is the fair, the, the, the intrinsic value is, the, the real value of the company is. So, um, and, and for my, from my personal experience, we, we, I try to look for the companies that are less covered, if that makes sense. No, so not your first liners. So this would Going back to the 45, 60, 90, this would roughly translate to your 60 degree companies. Now, so not as, as covered, widely covered by all the other analysts, right? Because then you have little mispricing because everybody knows what's happening, right? So little mispricing, little upside potential. On the other extreme, if you look at your 90 degree companies, yes, there's a lot of potential, but it's both ways. Upside potential and downside potential. So, so there, there could be a mispricing, but you don't know either, right? I don't know either whether it's going to go up or not. So, but for 60 degree companies, there's like, that's like the sweet spot, wherein you, there could be a mispricing, and with proper due diligence, then maybe you could have an idea, right, on whether or not it's going to go up or not. I mean, I totally agree. I think a lot of stocks, especially those uncovered, right, those 60 degrees, what you talked about, uncovered, huge potential, may jackpot because there's nothing in, Maybe you can share an example to the entire crowd, so at least they'll have a better idea of what you're talking about. Um, like the the recent rally, uh, we, we've I've I think we've all been very positive. Like for example, with uh, SSI, with Mrs. G, um, with uh, even Maxis. No, and and one of the main reason, you, it might sound very simple to you guys, but the, one of the main reasons is just the size of the company. The, the market cap of these companies are very small, no? around, 10 billion, around 10 billion pesos. No? So, so in, in a very sim, simplistic sense, the, the, bigger fund, the bigger funds in the Philippines, they, they don't care. Right? Even if there's an upside potential, they probably don't care because they won't be able to deploy significant amounts of their capital into it. Right? So even if they see um, a, 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 an upside potential there, they probably won't buy it because they're not allowed to. Right? So in a way, there's the, mar the, the markets there are in a way more inefficient. So if you, if you 
can put in the time to study these companies, then there's also a bigger potential when it, when it comes. Yeah, and I think it's totally in line with what Leonard was saying from a global standpoint. You're looking for startups, you're looking for growing companies, growing industries, something that people hasn't widespread adoption yet. Um, when it comes to other factors aside from size, do you also take a look at liquidity, float, um, so on and so forth, anything else in particular? Um, okay, so if, if you ask me, I take a look at everything as much as I can. No, so there's really, of course, some companies you tend to focus more on, on some things, but in general, I take a look at everything as much as I can. But maybe I could highlight some. No? So for example, for 60 degree companies, uh, the, 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 usually the key factor is here is the execution of the company because there's some uncertainty, so you have to make sure that they are executing because they're not yet quite as, as uh, big or as, as mature as the 45 degree companies. So you have to like, look at their execution, whether they're delivering, whether the, the growth rate is slowing down or accelerating. No? So that's, I guess, one for 60 degree companies. Do you? Uh, I think a key difference for us, because in our trading floor, we trade both for 60 and 90, and the things you look for are different. So in a 90 degree company, news flow is very important, like what are the news that's coming out? So for example, in the US, you have the cannabis sector. It's very huge potential, right? But you don't know what will happen five years down the road. So any news that could drive regulation approval of, that, of the cannabis creates opportunity for the short-term 90-degree trader to take advantage of. On the other hand, if you're a 60-degree trader, you study less on the news flow but on the business side, whether it's really, as Charles said, growing its earnings, executing well, taking advantage of the industry growth. So. And just to complete the picture, no? so for 45-degree companies, uh, you might notice that we, as traders, we generally like avoid them simply because you know everybody's looking at them. But maybe the 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 the, the easiest play for the, the blue chips would be during market capitulations, as Bod, Boss Edward was explaining a while ago, right? Where in when you have these extreme sentiments, extreme emotions in the markets, then that is what's causing the disparity between your blue chips and their real value. Right? So that's usually the play. So usually we avoid the the blue the 45 degree companies, the blue chips, except when there's a a, a major self in the market. So sentiment driven. Yeah. And I assume it's very in line with uh, different identities also. So meaning as traders, you guys have to know how to cut in the first place, right? So if you make a mistake when you're trading, you have to know how to get out, and that, I think that's the very most important part. And obviously, as both research heads, right, both of you have to make calls that have to cater to basically everybody. So it's not just the traders, but the investors, you have to make calls, right? So, and I think it's more prominent, especially for COL, right? That uh, whenever you make calls, yeah. you have to think about the different types of yeah. investors and traders that are involved into yeah. the brokerage, right? So maybe you could share a comment on this one. Okay, um, okay yeah, yeah, okay. So the, the thing is, like going back to what Leonard talked about a while ago, you, in this, Simply because you're buying like Philippine stocks, it doesn't mean we're all playing the same game, right? Um, and by game, this is like whether you're a, you're a buy and hold investor, an EIP investor, a day trader. But so, so let, let, let me just like characterize. No? What, what characterizes a game? No? So a game, so it would depend on your time horizon whether you need to make money on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, however hard that is, as boss said, right? So daily basis, monthly basis, yearly basis, or multiple years. It makes a difference on your strategy, right? R return objective also, that's, that, that makes a very different, uh, very significant difference in your strategy. If you're just aiming to, to outperform the market, maybe make 10, 15% a year, 20% a year, or do you need to make 100% a year because your account is too small? Right? So return objective obviously is also very important. And number three, your risk tolerance, your risk profile. Right? Um, and uh, the thing I'd like to note here is that people are usually, 
like too focused on the return, but they ignore the risk. But if you think about it, if your strategy involves a lot of risk, then almost by definition, you won't be able to scale up your portfolio, right? Maybe you can only invest like 5% of your net worth or 10% of your net worth, the extra cash, right? But if you want to invest 20, 30, 40, 50% of your net worth, then you have to be more risk averse, right? So that also plays a role in the game that you, that you will be playing. And then lastly, resources, right? how much time you have, how much skills you have when it comes to technicals and fundamentals, right? So um, what I'm trying to say is that in COL, at least the COL research, okay, because I'm part of the team, so a lot of people ask me, okay, so why is it that you recommend, for example, this one is a hold, but personally you're buying it, right? Because I'm playing a different game, at least on the side, right? Or, or, or why is it when a trader asks me, I might give a different answer as to my official research report, right? And the, and the answer to that is that the, the COL research is... is primarily for um, uh, longer-term investors, roughly one-year horizon, the return objective of, about, of just outperforming the index, so about 15, 20% per year, risk tolerance very low, right? limited time, limited resources. Right? This is the, the, the game that, that, that the CL research, at least, is trying to, to help. Right? So if I didn't describe you, then you should be a, should, you should use. I'm not saying this is now useless, but you have to look at other factors also that would help you in your in the game that you're playing. Now, so so because sometimes it, it's confusing. If if like you talk to a friend who plays a different game, you won't, probably won't see eye to eye. You're buying, he's selling. You're averaging down, he's. Like, but but don't get me wrong. There are rules to every game. It's not that I, I get, it's, I'm not saying that you just choose the game you play and do it however you want to do it, right? Um, there's, a, there's a rule to each of the game. You just have to know the rules. So what game do you play, Leonard? Uh, I like both 60 and 90, obviously. Uh, but I think the rules, I would say, are tricky because sometimes they contradict each other. So what Charles is saying, when you're in the 90, you want to buy high and sell higher. And normally you're chasing, right? When you're in your 60 or 45, as Juan said a while ago, let's say on the BDO breakout, you wanna take your time. You wanna wait for the pullback. So it's confusing at times and you need to spend time studying how the 90 and the 45 degrees work differently to eventually know which rules to apply to which. But it's always easier said than done, diba? Pa break out, feeling mo totoo na. Right? And it's going to leave you, it's going to go even higher. I mean, I think we've seen it with several stocks. After they break out, everybody assumes it's going to be like the next Wilcon versus a Ayala Land or whatsoever, right? Uh, what do you think is some of those mo common pitfalls that people, since they don't know what type of stock that they were buying, whether it's 45 and 90 degrees, what are the most common pitfalls that they often do? I think the most obvious one is when you're playing the 90 degree game and you don't cut your losses. Because a lot of those 90 degree stocks goes up times two, times three, and then they all retrace back. And you don't know where to cut your losses. So for me, that's the biggest pitfall on the 90 degree game. On the 45 degree game, the biggest pitfall is you're impatient. You want the stock to move, but it's just going to behave slowly. And you cut your losses, become too jittery. So yeah. Mabagal masyado. Mabagal masyado. So if... <laughs> You're, if you don't want, if you want it fast, you gotta, as Charles said, you need to have time spent looking at the market. Because most of our traders, they don't see CR yan pag 90 degree. Because eh. you don't, things could change in a minute. So it depends on what you can give. I was like a long term investor. Uh, that, that's, that's scary, that's dangerous. But yeah. Charles, anything to add? Um, yeah. So, so having said that, no, so it's very important because no, sometimes people approach me and ask me, okay, I have this stock XYZ, what do I do, right? And, uh, and, and honestly, I really couldn't answer without knowing anything else no, because I don't know the game that you're I don't know your strategy basically. So, so what I'm trying to say is that when, when, when you start trading, you have to know really who you are. No? 
I know it's not an overnight thing. You don't like decide this overnight, but you try to be conscious, right, on what you're doing. Because as you mentioned, the 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 hardest part is like starting off thinking that you're playing this game and ending up playing that game, right? So you're you're a speculator, you want to make money this month, and then it falls down 20%. Dibale, babawi naman yan. Okay lang. Okay lang. Eventually, in six months, akit yan. Diba? In one year, akit yan. So, and, and that's really very, 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 very scary. You know? Because it, it's no longer in line with your reality, with your expectations, with your requirements. You know? So you just have to be you just have to be extra careful when you're when you're playing different games. Can, can I add to that? Uh, as Charles said a while ago, you have to play to your strengths. So you have to find out what you're good at. Some people are very good at reading charts, understanding moods, sentiment, and you'd, be, you'd focus more on the 90. Other people really love looking at balance sheets, understanding the business, reading about what the company is doing, then you'd probably move toward the 45, 60. There's no judgment here. You gotta know what you go that, and you gotta play the game you came to play, I guess. Yeah, and I think this is very in line with what Chairman shared about being open-minded, understanding all different games, understanding the different types of expectations. So maybe can you share to the crowd, how do you keep an objective view all the time? I mean, you see a chart, you like the company, it's consolidating, all of a sudden it breaks down, right? Or vice versa. Okay. So, so for me, the... The, the thing I always try to keep in mind. Of course, it's very hard, no? I'm just trying to pretend that it's easy, right? So, but, so the, the thing that I'm trying to do all, to remind myself all the time is at the end of the day, it's a probability game, right? No matter what your strategy is, it's a probability game. Even if you have insider information, it's not 100% because the next day, the, the owner might have a different opinion, right? Different, different uh, idea, right? So what I mean is that there's no trade that's 100% correct. No matter how much the stars are aligned, there's no 100% um, probability. So with that in mind, no, so you always try to assume, so maybe you think you're 70% right, but what if the 30% happens? So you, ha you try to keep that open mind that maybe no matter how much due diligence you, you, you did, uh, you might still be wrong. So you just have to keep that in mind. Uh, I think it comes to the fact that we can make mistakes. So uh, Chairman talked about the blind spot bias. And you want to have a community where you try to share with each other and not about the ego, but about trying to learn and process whether the strategy being done is correct. And until today, like even for me, I still make a lot of mistakes. And you want to learn from those mistakes so that in the future you get better and better, right? So, so that's also a key. Okay, we have a few minutes left. Maybe from a trader standpoint, if you guys have last advice to everybody sitting in this room. Okay, so um, I'd like to give out an analogy. I think it's really good. So, so the, the title of today's uh, summit is Trading Beyond the Price. No? So, uh, and, and Edmund was talking about how, in a way, the goal is to help you guys, uh, encourage you guys to, to use fundamentals a bit more. No? Because I know, I understand that the fundamentals is the more boring part, right? I know everybody hates it. it sometimes I hate it also, even if it's my job, but it's my job, right? So, so let me share you my, my analogy. No? So, I'm sure everybody, like, you're aware of the, like, in a game show or in a, in, in a party where you, you have contestants here in front, like, let's say, 30, 40 contestants, and then the host would ask a question, like, a multiple-choice question, right? And then you would basically just line up on what you think the correct answer is, A, B, or C, right? Or, or whatever, right? And, and so everybody knows the game, right? And... I'm sure you also know that there's only like two sound strategies in this game, right? Answer the question, hopefully you get it right, or follow where everybody else is going, right? So there's, there, so I like to, to, to link it, no? Answering the question is like doing your fundamental analysis, right? You're trying to really find out what, what is the true value of the company, regardless of what everybody else is saying. 
What is the true value of the company? That's fundamental analysis. And on the other hand, technical analysis is all about what? Understanding market behavior. What is the price action telling you? Where are the, where's the, where, where are the other contestants going? Right? Are they going to choice A or choice B or choice C? Because if they're going, if 90% if, if went to, to C, that's probably the correct answer. Right? So that's technique. That's, I know um, I, all the all analogies are not, there's no perfect analogy, right? So please don't kill me, okay? Um, but but wh why I like this is that there's a lot of um, Im learnings that we can take from it. Number one, both, both strategies work. No? You, 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 can, you can't tell me that knowing the answer won't help you or following the crowd won't help you, right? That's obvious, right? More interestingly, though, you, we could also argue that the best contestants in this game show would be those that know a lot, that try to answer the question, and those that also follow where the crowd is going. Right? So it's a combination of two. Right? And so how do we apply this to trading? No? So, so it's the same way with trading. No? So if you have an idea on the fundamentals of a company, Let's say you're set, you're 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 um, uh, ninety percent sure that it's gonna go up based on fundamental. It's really cheap. It's really, and and um, let's say the the market price, right, is a bit more unsure, right? So maybe 50, 50 A and C, right? Then maybe go with your go with your go with your fundamentals. No, go with what you think is the correct answer. Right? But if, let's say, you don't know anything about the fundamentals, you're not sure, you're 50-50, then just follow the crowd. And the good thing is, you don't, have to do, you don't have to use the same tools every question. Right? If question one, you don't know the answer, then follow the crowd, go ahead, I don't mind. But if question two, you know the answer, but everybody else is going to the other way, maybe you, you go to the what you think is correct. Right? So saying that, Maybe the technicians would hate me for this, but saying that I'm just purely a technician for me is also saying that in that game show, you tell the host, no need to tell me the question. I'll just go where everybody else is going. It's the same for me. It's similar. Right? You're saying that you don't need to look at the company anymore. You don't need to look at the question anymore because you're just going to follow where the crowd is going anyway. Right? What I'm trying to say here is that knowing the question or knowing the fundamentals gives you an edge over the others. So maybe, maybe if, the, if your hit ratio is 50% using technicals, maybe you can increase it to, increase it to 55%, to 60%, right? To 65%. And then, and then ultimately over time, that extra 10% hit ratio would, would really mean a lot. So, so that's how I, how I view it. Okay. Uh, I don't have such a great analogy, but... <laughs> uh, Basically, for me, my advice is learn to play a game well first. So, uh, for example, in my part, I really try to learn the 60-degree game before I delve into the 90-degree game. And the goal is because, as you've heard a while ago, history repeats. Not exactly the same, but it repeats. So as you play the 90-degree game, let's say you select 90-degree, and you get better at it and better at it, eventually, you can find areas where you think you have the pocket aces, where you have the better edge, and now you can make more money on it. As same thing on the other side. So play a game well first, such that you can extract profits from it confidently, then move on to different games. That, that's, that's how I see it. Okay, I think the crowd understood the pocket aces analogy faster than your game show. <laughs> but nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Leonard. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.